Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about Darkfall Solus because we were able to clear this with three minutes remaining on the clock, which is my fastest time yet. So there are some mechanics that I want to share with you guys in today's video so that you can save a little bit more time. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the very first thing I want to showcase over here is, of course, the time itself. As you can see, we did clear it in 12 minutes and 25 seconds. And of course, this was still an S rank. Now, there are several key things that can make the run a lot more smoother. The first one and the most important one is team composition. So with the team that I ran with in order to get this 12 minutes and 25 seconds clear time, we did have a Tekker as well as a Ranger. Having the Shifter D-Band as well as the Blight Round is incredibly powerful. However, please do not think that a Tekker or a ranger can be a substitute for lack of dps you do need gear in order to clear this because there are a lot of dps checks so the very beginning of the fight you can notice that during this cutscene, while he's still like flexing you can actually start moving towards his right arm or his left arm and you could do a double jump and start damaging him right away you can see he's still in his animation but we've already done a little bit of chip damage so you can take advantage of this to just squeeze out that little bit of damage in order to get him into a second phase just that little bit faster or just break him a little bit earlier. Now once the fight actually starts you want to immediately focus the thing on his back. He has this thing over here that constantly shoots out missiles as well as ranged projectiles at you. So you want to destroy this ASAP. This is your number one priority. I know in the footage of my first clear video, we did not destroy this and uh, we cleared with three seconds remaining. So by destroying this, you can save a lot of time because it does make your life a lot easier. Now, something to keep note of is these laser beams. These laser beams will lock onto random people. And when it's locked onto you, please lead this laser beam away from your team. If you walk up to any of your teammates while this laser beam is going off, it will hurt your teammates as well. So please spread out when this happens and don't run in together because if two of these laser beams focus on one person and they fail to sidestep or counter, they are pretty much dead. So as you can see over here, Swagala is trying to get our team killed by running into us instead, but uh, luckily we were smart enough to run away from him. Now this attack over here is counterable. That big uh, thing that happened on the floor, as well as these pillars that float left and right, you can counter them, you can sidestep them. I know a lot of people were very confused and saying that this is an unblockable attack, but it is counterable, you're gonna be perfectly fine. Now once you destroy the thing, you're gonna notice that these bombs drop. Now if you don't have a lot of damage, these bombs might actually drop before you break the back piece. If that happens, you should focus the closest bomb while trying to hit the back piece at the same time. Time. So if you're a braver, you can simply use all of your photon arts to hit the bomb and then with your empowered normal attack, you can hit the back piece over here. So that is what I do. However, you know, in this run, we destroy the back piece instantaneously before the bombs even spawned. So now we can just focus on the bombs. It is very important to focus these bombs the moment they spawn because after you destroy the first three, it actually exposes a weak spot on his arms. Another thing is to also look at the mini map on the top left corner. You can see when these bombs spawn, they have these little blue arrows that spawn on the minimap as well, so you know where they are. So there's always going to be three in the first phase. Now you can see that we destroyed all of the bombs and this arm opens up. It's going to shine yellow and expose a weak spot. So that is where we want to focus all of our efforts on and deal tons of damage. Now, if you have a lot of damage, you can see that we actually broke his weak spot before he summoned another three bombs. However, it is possible if you have lower DPS that he summons three bombs immediately and hides his weak spot. If that happens, you just focus on the bombs again so that he reveals his weak spot so that you can actually break it. However, if you're in the same situation as my party over here and you broke the weak spot on one of his arms, you simply focus on the other arm. So the first weak spot exposed was actually on his right arm. So we immediately move over to his left arm and there's a weak spot right here on his palm so we just start hitting that and after a while you're gonna notice he summons these bombs again so what I usually do is I look at the mini map and you can see oh look they're on all three corners over here so now I know where the bombs are and we just all focus fire on one in order to break them ASAP I do not recommend spreading out and each person taking one of these bombs. I highly recommend everyone just focus one. If you have a ranger, make sure to use your blight round and take advantage of that. And as you can see over there, I had the laser beam focused on me. So I brought it away from the team instead of bringing it into them because 
again, we do have a death limit, so you don't want to cause any inconvenience for your teammates. Now, once you break all three bombs again, you can see his other arm opens up his weak spot. So we're going to head over there now, and we're just going to focus the weak spot and just keep DPSing. Now, after you break both of his arms, he's actually going to get stunned. As you can see right here, he stuns himself. Now, do not mistake this as a break. This is not a break. He's simply just in a down phase because we broke both of his arms. So he's semi stunned so that we can deal a ton of DPS. Over here, do not waste your Photon Blast, because right after the stagger, he will immediately break, which will give you another window to do tons of damage. So as we can see over here, we're simply going to not use our Photon Blast like what uh, someone did over here. I'm not going to call them out, but uh, as you can see, you know, we do some symbol arts like, sus, why did you Photon Blast? But it's perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. What we want to do is we just want to DPS normally. You can see I use my Katana Combat Finisher. I do my 19,000 damage. Immediate break. And right here, this is where you use your Photon Blast. I'm going to hit 50,000, I believe. Yep, 50,000. Very nice DPS. Very, very good. And we just want to burst as hard as possible. The main thing you want to do during this break phase is to try to get him to half HP or lower. Because once he gets below half HP, he will go into phase. And that's what we want to do because we want to transition into phase 2. So now we're going to see he's going to get back up. He is, he'll do one attack over here. So this is the uh, smash attack. Again, you can counter this or block this or whatever if you want. And now it is phase. You're going to notice it's phase when these red pools spawn on the ground. You want to stay away from them because pillars are going to raise from the floor. As you can see right here, you want to wait for them to come up and then you're going to jump on them. So I highly recommend everyone focus on one side first and then move over to the other side because there's going to be two of these yellow things and there's this pool of red goo that will slowly fill up the entire arena. You need to break these before the goo touches you because the moment the goo touches you, you're going to be taking damage over time. And on top of that, after you complete the mechanic, which you break both of these, if you are in the red goo, you take a ton of damage. So you want to make sure that uh, you break these really, really quickly. This is essentially a DPS check. As you can see over here, we did split up, but I do recommend just everyone focus on one side unless you are very confident in your DPS. So you can see over here, we did split up. Now they did have the blight round, but I think Swagala kind of fell off the map or something over there. Really, really weird. But either way, we destroy ours first and immediately we start heading over there to help Swagala's group. And when this happens, even though we cleared the mechanic where we broke both of them, you want to stay away from this red goo. You do not want to drop down and touch this because if you touch this red goo at the end of this phase, you're going to take a massive burst damage. As you can see, that went all purple for a second. That is basically like a huge burst of damage. You want to stay away from it and another reason why you want to stay in the air is because you're going to be focusing his head the moment that this phase ends you're going to notice that his head is a weak spot it's shining over here so you want to dps it in order to get extra damage so that you break him so that he actually goes into another free dps phase right here so you can see right here before we even get to phase two which usually starts at 50 percent hp we're able to squeeze out that extra 10 percent damage maybe 15 percent damage before he actually goes into phase two which is very very helpful because phase two is a lot about staying alive as you can see over here now he moves over to phase two he summons his gigantic staff and uh, he's gonna start being really annoying so his first attack over here is very similar to Dark Falls. He doesn't always start with this attack, but basically you want to avoid the purple zone. So you want to stand over here, as you can see, and just avoid that big swing attack. The advice that I can give most people is just stay in the middle as much as possible. It gives you the most room to avoid specific attacks. As we can see over here, this is a staff attack which shoots out all these projectiles. As a Braver, you can counter this attack and then use your empowered normal attack to hit from range in order to deal damage to the staff very, very easily. Another thing is you can actually walk up. As you can see, there was a ring that charged up. So after the staff smashes into the ground, there's a small visual effect of a ring charging up. When it hits the rim over here, that is when you weapon action in order to get the counter. Now, if you're playing another class, you can also sidestep in order to deal additional damage to the staff while avoiding the damage. As you can see over here, I did my counter. So that was great. Over here, I'm going to do a counter again. Perfect. See, very, very simple. And once he's done with that, he's actually going to charge towards you, as you can see over here, in order to do this staff smashing attack. Now, this smashing attack is going to get faster and faster as he smashes it multiple times. You just need to get used to the timing or just avoid it altogether, I suppose, or just block it. But after that, you do have a couple seconds to deal DPS. 
Now he does his dash again, so we just stay away from it. And once he does this attack, you want to stay in the middle. So as I said earlier, staying in the middle of this map is going to be your best friend because it gives you the most time to react to his attacks. So over here, he's going to smash his staff. When he smashes his staff here, he's immediately going to dash after this explodes. He's going to dash forward. So immediately you can see all of my teammates dashing forward so that we can hit his weak spot right after the staff explodes. So it explodes over here. You can see that I wasted my dash, but you can see that the boss now swings forward, exposing a weak spot on his chest as well as a staff. It doesn't matter which weak spot you focus on, all that matters is that you focus on the same spot as a team. If you break the staff, you'll be stunned in this pose just for a little bit longer. Breaking either weak spot has the same result where the boss will be staggered for some time so that you get some free DPS. Now right after that, you can see he's doing the same move again where he's doing the cubes, so we know immediately right after the cubes, he's going to smash his staff into the middle, and then he's going to crash forward just like what we saw. As we can see right here, his staff crashes back, we're going to move forward to the boss again because he's going to dash forward, and boom, you see? So it's a cycle. Every time you see those four squares happen, you're immediately going to know he's going to smash his staff into the middle, and he's going to dash forward. So you want to position yourself so that the moment he dashes forward, you get a weapon action counter, or you get a sidestep counter, and then you can deal tons of damage to his weak spot. Now that is complete and this is the fun part. So he's going to summon this wall that slowly builds itself and what you want to do is you want to avoid it by jumping through the gaps. You can see there's a doorway there, there's a window here and a window here. But the main thing about this part is you constantly want to move forward because right after this attack he will be vulnerable for a couple seconds so that you can deal tons of damage. So you can see over here immediately he's going to dash forward once again and boom we got another window to deal damage. So this boss fight on the second phase, it's all about positioning and maximizing his mini DPS phases. We don't officially get like a super big DPS phase, we just get a bunch of small DPS phases, which you need to take advantage of in order to beat the boss in time. As we can see right now, he's doing the square thing where we have to hide in the middle, the staff is going to smash into the middle of the map, and then he's going to dash at us. So again, we're going to run forward over here, he's going to dash at us, and then we're going to do DPS again. And here we go, more damage, easy peasy. Now he's just going to start smashing again with his staff and just deal tons of damage over here. We just want to make sure that we weapon action or counter or just tank through it, whatever. Whatever works for you. And uh, yeah, you just want to survive that attack. Now he's going to do these pillars. When these pillars come down, you immediately want to get behind one of them and make sure that the camera is facing the boss. The reason for this is because the boss is going to throw a ton of projectiles towards you. However, the boss will rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise, and that's why you need to look at the boss to see which direction he's turning. As you can see, he's turning counterclockwise over here, so we just want to make sure that we are behind the pillar the entire time so that it protects us, because right after he gets back to his original point, he's going to do this gigantic AoE that is going to kill you if you stand on the outside. I think you might be able to tank it if you have a ton of HP, but nevertheless this attack over here is very very painful. And after he blasts away the pillar, he's immediately going to dash forward again, so you want to position yourselves again relatively forward in order to get more DPS over here so that you can deal that extra damage, because remember you are still fighting against the clock. Remember you only have 15 minutes to kill this boss both phase 1 and phase 2. Here comes the staff again, we move forward, Swagala died, how unfortunate, and over here we are in position to do damage again. So now that you know his basic rotation, it's not that difficult at all. It's basically the same couple attacks over and over and over, and you just need to know where to position yourself in order to maximize damage. So it's not too difficult once you get used to it, however a lot of it is going to be muscle memory, you're going to need to bash your face against this over and over and over and get used to all his different attacks in order to maximize the areas where you can squeeze out that little bit of DPS. Now sometimes he'll do this attack over here, you're going to notice that there's like a bunch of squares that are purple. You want to avoid the purple, but he's also going to throw cubes at you. As you can see over here, because we're standing so forward, you don't have a lot of time to react. You can counter these cubes or you can sidestep these cubes. However, you cannot counter or sidestep the purple goo on the floor when you need to avoid this. So you can see over here that I countered that or I sidestepped it actually, and immediately he does another dash attack. So he gets faster and faster, so you do need to be on 
your toes and react really quickly. This attack over here is really annoying because it wastes a lot of time. As you can see, we can't actually hit the boss when this is happening. And uh, yep, there we go. He dashes forward. And I'm pretty sure we are going to go into his last phase relatively soon now. And here we go, once we get the boss to about 10% HP, he's gonna fly away and Ran is gonna be, it's still going strong, secure a safe place. Now you're gonna notice there's gonna be a bunch of mines on the ground. You're gonna notice they're all gonna crash down and you can see there's a total of nine mines on the ground. I recommend breaking the middle one first and then moving forward and working around clockwise or counterclockwise so that you make it back to the boss after you break all of the mines. Um, now you can do this in any order you want. That's just how I personally like to do it, but you just wanna work together as a team to try to break these mines ASAP. Uh, again, I don't really recommend splitting up. You can split up if you want, if you're confident in your damage, but these mines are just gonna be constantly exploding. He's gonna constantly throw these cubes at you as well as the purple goo on the the ground so you want to avoid all of this damage and it's just going to be very very chaotic so uh, you just want to make sure that hey you guys burst these mines down asap because remember you are still racing against the clock so you can see that we are working together as a team as four players it does not take very long to break these mines now this attack is incredibly dangerous you can see there's a bunch of circles underneath us as well as a bunch of purple laser beams these laser beams target multiple characters but because we're all stacked on top of each other it becomes incredibly lethal so please when this happens you need to spread out or you just need to be super confident in your ability to weapon action or sidestep this because uh, it will deal a ton of damage as you can see we lost two players instantaneously because uh well you know they didn't sidestep or weapon action and that's why you need to spread out or else you will get your teammates killed which is going to lower the chances of you beating this quest so again you can see right here we are just stuck together breaking these bombs asap and there we go we broke all of the bombs he's immediately going to be dazed over here so now you have a couple seconds to break this point over here now keep in mind this is very similar to true profound darkness in the base game where he does have an explosion attack the moment he gets out of this daze which deals a ton of damage you want to make sure you avoid that explosion so i'm going to let the b-roll play over here and you're going to see the moment he gets up he's actually going to do a gigantic explosion attack which i'm actually going to use my brave combat to avoid i believe as you can see over here, there's this purple thing that's charging up. Please avoid that because this does a lot of damage. You do not want to be hit by this. As you can see, I did use my Brave Combat to avoid all the damage over there. And we're immediately going to be breaking the boss relatively soon. Or he goes into his down phase first, actually. So now he's in his down phase and we actually kill him before we go into the break phase. So when you get to this phase, it's pretty much a free clear already. You just need to make sure that you avoid that gigantic purple explosion at the very end. But if you survive that, it's pretty much free because he will go into a staggered phase, into a down phase, into a break phase, and then you'll just kill him. It's very, very simple. As you can see over here, we killed him and we still have plenty of time. Oh, well, the timer disappeared, but we still had plenty of time to spare. And as I said in yesterday's video, the loot is absolutely abysmal. As you can see, I got a Neo A Blades, yay, and a Golden Prim Armor 2, and a Golden Prim Sword 2, and a bunch of junk. Uh, I guess the Star All Soul is pretty nice, but everything else is pretty mediocre. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel, it really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye!